that we pray in the name of Jesus this morning that there would be exposure to all of those things and that your word would come alive in our heart and soul. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Haggai chapter 2. We're going to begin in verse 1 this morning. The place that we are at in Haggai, Babylon has already come and destroyed the temple, Solomon's temple, the most beautiful temple that they had ever seen and had ever been built. It was so glorious and so magnificent, not only in what it looked like in the architectural design, but the gold, the silver, the, 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 the cost to put into this temple was so great. The Queen of Sheba traveled from afar just to see it. It was a glorious temple that God had orchestrated and designed and had Solomon built. But Babylon came because of the sin of Israel. They opened themselves up to the, the curse of God. God promised them that if you don't re repent and turn back to me, Babylon will come. Jeremiah prophesied to them and gave them fair warning along with other prophets of God that if they did not repent, Babylon would, would come. Jeremiah prophesied of this before Babylon was even a threat. To, to the Hebrews. But as sure as God's word is true, Babylon did rise up in power and they did come and they completely destroyed the temple of God. Solomon's temple was destroyed. Nebuchadnezzar took all of the prized gold goblets and all of the, 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 the precious utensils that was used in the sacrifice and he took them back to Babylon. In fact, if you know your Bible a little bit, you recall in the book of Daniel where the king lifts up the golden cup that was used in the house of God. It was a, a holy cup that was used in the act of sacrificing to God. He lifts it up with wine to toast his own self. And he saw the handprint of God, the finger of the Lord, telling him, today your, num your days are numbered. Today your kingdom will fall. And that very night, Persia came in, took his life, and took over the kingdom. That's a quick, a quick word of the Lord coming to pass. Amen? Amen. So that temple was what was destroyed. And now here in Haggai, we have the children of God. This is probably 60 years after the temple has been destroyed. We have Haggai prophesying to the children of God, and they're going to try to rebuild the temple in, in Israel. It says, In the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month, came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shethiel, the governor of Judah, to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and to the residue of the people. The residue is those that have remained. Up to this point, Israel has gone through an awful lot of a horrible hell. They've been led off captive. They've watched as their blessed, glorious temple that they needed in order to sacrifice to God. To keep the law was destroyed. And there's just a few left. He says, speak to the residue of the people who, has le who is left among you that saw this house, the temple, in her first glory. How do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes a comparison of it as nothing? God asks them a question and then he immediately answers it because he knows what's in their heart. They had beheld the temple of Solomon and all of the beauty that it was. And now they are trying to rebuild it. And as they're trying to rebuild it in their heart, they were saying... It is never going to be like Solomon's temple. Even though we are doing this labor and this work, it's never going to be the same. And God knew that this was what was in their heart. All of the failure of the past was affecting as they were building the new. Amen. Verse 4. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, says the Lord. 
Be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest. Be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work. For I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. According to the word that I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains among you. Fear ye not, for thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once in a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house will be greater than of the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. This prophecy that God gives to Haggai is a double prophecy. One of it is speaks of the immediate reaction to them in this time. But there is another prophecy that it foretells that is even yet to come and completely be fulfilled. This morning I want us to talk about a shaking of all that is loose. I don't have any inside track on the future. Your guess if is as good as mine, except for the Word of God. The Word of God gives us insight into the things that are going to be taking place. He says, there is coming a day I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations will come. I'm going to fill this house with glory. He says, the silver is mine, the gold is mine. Right now, in our country, we as Christians look at the word, and even though this was originally given to the Hebrew people, if you are a child of God, it was given to you because you are a Hebrew by faith. Yeah. You are a child of Abraham by faith is what the, the word tells us. It, the covenant and the promises that God gave to the children of Israel ultimately belong to us as well as Christians because of faith. But that which this is foretelling in terms of Israel, it is also speaking of the nation of Israel. There is going to come a time where God is going to shake the heavens and the earth. The word of God has foretold it. And anything that is loose will fall. Anything that is possible to be shaken is going to crumble. And I know that there are people, pastors, there are Christians who say that the pulpit and politics have no place together. That as Christians, we should not even be talking about politics. We should not even be talking about something so carnal as government. But I want us to be very clear today. And I've talked to some of those people and I've just had discourse with them on that opinion. But I want us to understand this morning the entirety of the Bible speaks of kingdoms, nations, kings, and governors. That's right. That's politics. That's right. Every part of this Bible has to somehow bring man and his fingerprint into it because even the Antichrist is a government <coughs> and the Bible talks about it. The Bible says that the heart of the king beats in the hand of God. Now, that means the president's heart is beating in God's hand. And God moves it as he listeth, as he wants. Amen. That's the word. As we look at the, gov at the government, as we look at our country and the countries of the world, they have this unbelievable de desire for money, for gold, for fame. And they think that they are calling the shots. Uh -huh. Our government and the governments of the world think that they are controlling everything that takes place. But I got news for them. There is a God in heaven. You better believe And they cannot even think without God desiring their thoughts. There is a plan that God has Come ordained from the beginning of time. And it's going to be fulfilled according to his word. There is coming a time and it even is at the door. Where everything that can be shaken is going to be shaken. That's right. The heavens are going to shake. The earth is going to shake. Everything under the earth is going to shake. 
And only those that are remaining in Christ Jesus, laying hold of Calvary's cross, is going to stand firm. So those brethren, those people who think that I'm wrong even right now talking about government, I believe they are missing a large puzzle piece because if they're not wise enough to see government, That's right. then they're going to miss out on everything that God is showing us in his word. Let's keep reading because we're, we're getting someplace here today. Verse 10, in the 4 and 20th day of the ninth month, this is the third prophecy of Haggai. The first prophecy is in chapter 1. The second prophecy is what we just read in chapter 2, 1 through 8. And now this is the third prophecy. Verse 10. <laughs> and in the fourth and twentieth day of the ninth month, in the second year of Darius, came the word, the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Ask now the priest concerning the law. If one bear holy flesh in the skirt of his garment, and with his skirt do touch bread or pottage, or wine or oil or any meat, Shall it be holy? And the priest answered and said, No. Then Haggai said, If one that is unclean by a dead body touch any of these, shall it be unclean? And the priest answered and said, It shall be unclean. Then answered Haggai and said, So is this people and so is this nation before me, saith the Lord. So is every work of their hands, and that which they offer, there is unclean. The point that Haggai is prophesying by the Holy Spirit is holiness cannot be passed on between you and me. Holiness comes only through Jesus Christ. But sin can be passed. Sin and the people that we choose to be around will affect us. Amen. Bad company corrupts good morals. That's right. When I choose to hang out with bad apples, their infectious sin is going to begin to influence my life. And the only way they're going to get to heaven is if they repent and look to Jesus Christ. I can be a good influence on them, but I can't make them holy. I can't make them righteous. But I can point them to the, he that can. Yeah. <laughs> but sin is a different thing. It is easily passed on. It corrupts our spirit. We hear it and become desensitized to sin. That which used to cause us ill and Displeasure all of a sudden begins to not seem as wicked as it once did. That's right. He says that it was the state of Israel. But he says in verse 15, and now I pray you consider from this day and upward, from before a stone was laid upon a stone in the temple of the Lord. Since those days were, when one came to a heap of 20 measures, there were but 10. When there came to the press fat to draw out 50 vessels out of the press, there was but 20. I smote you with blasting, with mildew, with hail, and in all the labors of your hands. Yet you turn not to me, says the Lord. Now listen, I'm asking us to look into our heart today. Because there is a shaking coming. Yeah. You might have just read this and thought that is a bunch of gibberish. But God is telling you a warning right now. There is a shaking that is coming. And if you are not right with God, you're going to fall through the sift. You are not going to stand and be able to endure that which is to come. Because sin affects our life. It weakens us. It weakens our morals. It weakens the stance that we have before God. And if we are entertaining things, God is going to say, consider your ways today. Because there is a day coming that is shaking the earth. There is a day coming that God is going to, to judge between the good and the good. And the wicked. He says, I smote you with blasting. Because of their sin, God was coming against them to try to push them into the point where they would repent. But he says, yet you turn not to me. But now that Israel had returned to God. They were now building this temple. Their heart had been changed. God says in 18, consider now from this day forward. From the 4 and 20th day of the ninth month, even from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider this. Is the seed yet in the barn? Yea, is yet the vine, the fig tree, and the pomegranate, and the olive tree hath not brought forth? But from this day will I bless you. Because Israel had aligned themselves up with the righteousness of God, God says, what I once was blasting you with, 
when I was once coming against you and everything that you were trying to do was coming to nothing. He says, but from this day, I'm going to bless you. From this day forward, I'm going to begin to prosper you. What I'm talking about today is not silver and gold. I'm not giving you a message saying that God is going to prosper you with finances. Because I'll be frank with you. Our life is teetering on such a pinnacle, such a tiny little needle. That everything in life as you know it could be gone in the morning. You can lay your head on the pillow at night thinking you are on top of the world. And you wake up realizing you've lost everything. And if that's where your hope is, you're going to fall too. When he says right. the gold is mine, the silver is mine. He says everything that this kingdoms of this earth are seeking after, it belongs to me. That's right. They think they're seeking after riches and fame, but God is leading them on like a mule chasing a, a carrot. He's dangling in front of them so that the whole puzzle piece falls into place. And again, the word of the Lord. I got, I'm getting to our final point here. Again, the word of the Lord came to Haggai in the 4 and 20th day of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth. I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms. That's politics. I will destroy the strength of kingdoms of the heathen. I will overthrow the chariots, those that ride in them. The horses and their riders will come down. And every one by the sword of his brother. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, I will take you, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shittil, saith the Lord, I will make you a signet. For I've chosen you, saith the Lord of hosts. There is a shaking that is coming. We have already endured some of the shaking. We have already went through some shakings and some trials of our lives. I have watched as... And it... It brings me displeasure. But I've watched brethren and Christians and pastors and church leaders who talk the talk, but when the shaking had already come, they bowed their knee to the kingdoms of this world. They were too timid, too afraid of losing what they had gained, too afraid of losing what they had gathered together and they're little kingdoms. And let me tell us today, there are churches that are little kingdoms. They are governed as if they are a kingdom of themselves and the church leaders are their kings. And they don't want to lose them. So when the shaking comes and they are, are, are on the scales of life, they have to choose between serving God and men. Keeping what they have worked their whole life to gather or letting it go and laying hold of Christ and what he has done, they bow their knee to Baal. They bow their knee to the kingdoms of this world. And I have seen it already in the little bit of shakings in the past four years and more. But now we're faced with a whole new system all over again. And if we are ignorant enough that we don't think that there is going to be a shaking this year, I'm worried about where you're at spiritually with your discernment. I'm worried about what you really see is taking place. Because this country is going to fall. Right. This nation is going to fall down. And I am a patriot. I love this country. I tear up when I hear the national anthem. I take my hat off and I put it over my heart when I sing the Pledge of Allegiance. Amen. I am a patriot of our nation and I love the history of the men and the women who gave their lives so this country could be free. Yeah. But it is a kingdom of the flesh and it will not stand. Because what does he say? I will overthrow the kingdoms, their thrones. Right. I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the earth, of the heathen. I will overthrow them. I will take down the chariots I will, and those that ride in them. The horses and their riders will come down, everyone by the sword of his brother. If our faith and our, and our hope is in this life or in a political figure, and we think they're going to change the world, we are horribly misguided. There's only one that is on the throne that will endure for all times. And his name is Jesus Christ. Every politician, 
every he, a heathen nation, every country will come down because the word of God has already declared it. And you and I get to watch the show until the trump sounds and the dead in Christ rise first and we which are alive and remain will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air and we will forever be with him and we're going to take comfort in that hope until that day we get to, to enjoy the show. But there is a shaking that's taking place. And it's only if your faith is anchored in the word, in truth, that you're going to survive the storms. That you're going to endure. Because the whole world is going fast after a mirage. A hologram that looks real but immediately evaporates when the light is shined upon it. It is not real. The spirit of the Antichrist is already in the world, the Bible says. And many are following after it. That's right. I'm here to encourage us today. I'm here to remind us. Again, I don't know what this year has in store. I don't have an ins uh, a secret insight into what's going on. I just read the word and listen to the spirit as he leads. And I think we're in for a ride, a shaking. So we better, we better be buckled up, amen? We better make sure that we are in a place with Christ right now. That when that shaking comes, it doesn't take us by surprise. It doesn't throw us. It doesn't buck us. But we've already known. I'm going to close with this. Just like on our Wednesday nights, we were studying last Wednesday about how God was continuously reminding Paul of the afflictions that were going to come in Jerusalem. God is so faithful to give his people <coughs> heads up. You look throughout all the Bible. That's what the job of the prophet was to do, was to give them warning before it happened. Because God was not going to take his chosen people by surprise. He was going to give them warning so that they knew. Yes. Even the rapture of the saints is not going to take the church by surprise. Right. We don't know the day or the hour, but we're ready for it. He's warned us of it coming. He's told us to be ready. Have our lamps trimmed and have extra oil. To be waiting and watching and praying. He's told us of all this. So when it happens, when the trump sounds and in the twinkling of an eye, this takes place, the church is already ready. It's those that are left behind that are shocked. They weren't ready. They weren't prepared for what was coming. There is a shaking that is coming to our nation and to this world. And it doesn't even take a prophet to see that. Right. Just watch the news with a little bit of discernment and you can figure it out. That's right. There's even unsaved heathens that know that there's a shaking that is coming. What I'm telling us today is if you know your word, you know where you need to be holding on to. Amen. If you know the word of God and you see what it has foretold and told us, we know that this kingdom is what is established. And every kingdom that is lifted up by the hands of man is coming down. If man's fingerprint is on it, it will be destroyed. Because there is only one kingdom that is lifted up. The Bible tells us in Daniel, which is an incredible book that gives us insight into the last days. Nebuchadnezzar's dream, that statue was raised up. It engulfed the kingdoms of the world. When that vision was given to Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel interpreted that dream, those kingdoms had not even been heard of before. The only kingdom that had been established was Babylon itself. That was it. All of the other kingdoms of the body of that statue had never even been heard of. Rome was not even a thought. Medo-Persia, all of these things. Assyria, all of these countries were not even something that was in their minds. But God gave them warning ahead of time. These are that which is to come. And now we're blessed to be on this side of history that we can actually see the book of Daniel, see how God gave the vision, see how God interpreted it before man. And then we now got history to prove all of those nations in fact rose up. If you know anything about history, 
You know that every part of that statue has come to pass. Except the ten toes. Which is yet to come. And Daniel saw a stone. Or Nebuchadnezzar dreamt of a stone. A little stone. That fell out of heaven. Amen. Hit the feet of that statue. Instantly that statue crumbled and fell to the ground. And it became like powder. And a big wind came along and blew those kingdoms away. And then it says that that little stone suddenly grew and it filled the entire earth. The interpretation of that kingdom is the kingdom of God is the kingdom of Jesus Christ. It's going to come and it's going to destroy every kingdom that has ever been lifted up in this planet. It will be blown away and destroyed and the kingdom of God will be what is in the land. Amen. And if you do not know that and you don't believe that, this whole message is probably confusing to you. So get saved so you can understand it. Yes. Amen? Amen? Because it's coming. It affects all of us. Be ready. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's bow our hearts together. Heavenly Father, I come unto you and I ask for your help today. Lord, in this building and those that might be listening and watching later, there are people who are not born again. Going to church doesn't save a soul. Being water baptized doesn't even save a soul. Saying I'm rep repeating a prayer does not save a soul. Jesus says you must be born again. Unless you are born again, you will not see the kingdom of God. You will continue to be of the kingdoms of this earth that will be destroyed. We have to change kingdoms. We have to change lords. We were born in sin. We were born fallen. To go to hell, all we got to do is nothing. By default, every one of us will automatically end up in hell. There must be a change that takes place. There must be a new birth. We must change kingdoms, change lords. And Father, I pray that if there is anyone here and I believe there are that are not right with you. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit's conviction would do your work. Because yes. we're not promised to leave this building. We're not promised the trump won't sound in 30 seconds. Yes. Right. We better be right with you. Because your word has foretold it and has said it and it does not lie. It has already proven itself as true. If we can see the facts of how your word has been prophesied and foretold and come true already, why would we believe not the ending of it? Lord, I pray that you would move in our hearts to right now repent of our sins and to follow Jesus, surrender to you, make you the Lord of our life. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Father. Is there anyone here this morning that has anything on your heart that you want to share? I saw some hands that were raised earlier that you had something on your heart. But does anybody have anything right now that you feel the Holy Spirit wants you to share? Go ahead.